what appeals to one won't appeal to another. There's no hard and fast way to get it done. It's all about what you find interesting. If it motivates you, if it tickles your brain, that's what you want to go for because that's what's going to help you sustain your attention over time. Welcome to Spark Joy, the podcast dedicated to celebrating the Kamari method and the transformative power of surrounding yourself with joy and letting go of all the rest. With your hosts and certified Kamari consultants, Kristen Ivey and Karen Sochi. And now, here's the show. Here on Spark Joy, we talk about topics that support our listeners along their tidying journeys. We're not just interested in tips and techniques for getting organized, but also in confronting barriers that stand in the way of living a more joyful life. One topic that our listeners frequently ask about is ADHD, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. We first addressed the intersection of home organizing and ADHD in SparkJoy episode 105 as it applies to both adults and children. And now we've invited someone who is living and thriving with the diagnosis, empowering others to do the same. Renee Brooks has taken a late in life diagnosis and used it to uplift others. She is the founder of Black Girl Lost Keys, a blog that empowers black women with ADHD and shows them how to live well with the disorder. Welcome, Renee. Thank you so much for having me. I'm glad to be here. We are so glad to have you, and we want to start right off with your story. Tell us a little bit about what life was like before you learned about ADHD and your diagnosis and your entire path to wellness. Absolutely. So I was diagnosed with ADHD at a time when they didn't think that girls, and especially little Black girls, had ADHD. It was the popular line was that they were trying to drug children up instead of giving them discipline. And I was kind of swept up in all of that. My mom was very adamant that, you know, they weren't going to mistreat her child by drugging her up. And at the age of 25, we found out, no, I really do have ADHD. And so here I am. By that time, I had lived a very, very messy life, piles of laundry. My desks at school were always so crammed full that they would have to be turned over and dumped out. Very embarrassing. My locker, same thing, cram jammed with paper and books and pens and unidentifiable objects. After I got diagnosed with ADHD, everything started to become more clear. I learned more about the disorder. I started taking meds. And as you learn about the way that your brain works and the way that we organize things and the the way that we think, you're able to kind of stop fighting the way that your brain wants to do things and learn how to work with it. So a lot of traditional organizing techniques just don't fit well for us because we don't function that way. Does that make sense? Yeah, that totally makes sense. And I'm thinking before we dive in deep here, we should probably take a step back. It would be great if you could define ADHD for us from your perspective. Absolutely. So attention deficit hyperactivity disorder is characterized by issues with time, organization, some emotional dysregulation. It makes it difficult for you to focus on the things, even things that you would like to focus on sometimes. So that creates a lot of different challenges. It creates challenges with organizing your time, your money, and of course, your space. And when you're having issues in one area, as you know, those can bleed in to other areas of your life. So you just kind of feel like you're just walking around as this bundle of disorganization and stress all the time. And it can be really difficult to disrupt that cycle. And I love the name of your business, Black Girl Lost Keys. I'd love to hear how you came to name your business. There actually, there's a book, a quite famous book called Black Girl Lost. And one of the characteristics of ADHD is losing or misplacing objects. So 
you know, one day I cracked a joke and said, well, I'm not Black Girl Lost. I'm Black Girl Lost Keys. <laughs> and the, it would just so happen to be around the time that I was trying to search for a name for the blog. And I was like, oh, it can't be anything but that. Yeah. I really love that title in Kanmai and in, in uh, my practice. And I'm sure probably Kristen's also. We talk with our clients about how much time we spend looking for things. Yes. And there is a old saw that says we spend about an hour a day looking for things. And the example of lost keys and the amount of time in our lives that we spend looking for our keys is something that I don't think most people realize until they really think about the five minutes here, the 10 minutes there, even, you know, just every day trying to get everything together. So it's such a great title. Thank you very much. How do you see the connection between organization and ADHD? So again, when you're consistently misplacing things and having difficulty organizing your thoughts and organizing your objects, it things pile up. You'll find that you don't have time to complete organizing tasks or that a lot of people with ADHD start things and don't finish them. And in fact, people with ADHD who are afraid of Kalmari, it's usually because of that, because the thought of pulling things out and then never coming back to them again is a very real reality for some of us. So I personally love it. I've used it. It's been phenomenal for me. I think it's a lot of fun, but I think sorting things out of piles is fun. If that doesn't appeal to the person directly, it might not be a good fit. The question, does it spark joy, is a simple one, but not so easy to execute alone. Extend your tidying experience by joining the Spark Joy Club, our online community filled with our clients, fellow listeners, and Kamari enthusiasts ready to support your journey. If you find yourself buried under clothing, stuck on storage, or pointing fingers at untidy housemates or family members, we want to help you finish your tidying journey once and for all. Support the show at the Joy Riser level and receive access to our exclusive virtual community, as well as the Tidy Home Joy Journal, your number one tidying companion. Visit sparkjoypodcast.com and click on Join the Club to get started. And now back to the show. Someone who has ADHD and someone who feels that they're disorganized, but they don't know for sure that they meet that diagnosis. What are some of the the signs to look for that will, would tell someone that maybe this is something they should look further into? I would say one of the things that would make me consider looking at ADHD is if you've constantly consistently over the course of your life, underperformed and underdelivered what you know you're capable of, that you always feel like you're behind the eight ball and you're always cleaning up a mess. Now, none of that is clinical criteria, but especially for a lot of women, the criteria as it's written doesn't feel familiar or comfortable to them. But also I would recommend there's plenty of good, solid assessments on the internet. If you type in ADHD assessment, several of them will come up and you can just hop right in and start answering those questions. And the thing that's important to know about ADHD is that when you look over the course of your life, you will be able to see those symptoms and how they played out for you. This isn't something that just starts up overnight for people. We'll make sure to link your favorite assessment recommendation, Renee, in the, our show notes, because I think that's really important to, you know, be able to be asked the right questions in order to come to the right conclusions when it comes to ADHD and other similar disorders. Let's talk a little bit about ADHD and women of color, which is a large part of the focus of your work. What are some of the special challenges? I'm guessing even getting diagnosed may present some obstacles? It does. So when you're talking about any kind of health disparity to begin with that exists, there's a, a particular problem in ADHD with women being diagnosed. That, Like I said a little while ago, when they did 
a lot of the research on this disorder, it was done on young white boys. They didn't necessarily think this was something that could continue into adulthood. So what's happening now is that a lot of women are taking their children in to be diagnosed with ADHD or, or assessed for it and listening to those questions and going, oh, that's me. Oh, that's me. And they're discovering that they have ADHD because their children do. It's very hereditary. You're as likely to inherit ADHD from a parent as you are to inherit their eye color. So when you take a health disparity like that, and you add the lens of race into it, then it becomes even more of a barrier. And one of the things that they use to treat ADHD is stimulants. Stimulant medication is controlled substances. Then you've got people who are looking at Black people through the lens of prejudice and thinking, you know, they should not have access to these controlled substances because they'll misuse them. So you've got that, you've got the stigma of mental health that plays out through the Black community with good reason because the medical community has abused us. So there's many pieces to that pie, but what the result is, is that Black women with ADHD are often very isolated because they don't have a place where they fit in. They don't necessarily fit well into the white neurodiverse community that doesn't always understand issues of race and they don't always fit neatly in to the Black community that doesn't always understand issues of neurodivergence and mental health. So they're just kind of in limbo. Yeah. And how do you work with your clients within Black Girl Lost Keys to fill that void or support the community? We talk about why representation matters. And one of the reasons why representation matters in this case is because there are so many Black women who feel like they are completely alone and like nobody else is going through this. So just me existing in the first place is a wonder for them. And then we come through and talk like when people go, well, what specific issues do Black people face? The issues that we face outside of racial issues are the same that every other ADHD person would have. But when you bring the context of race in, then there's some specialized areas. For instance, when you're talking about organizing and being clean, the stereotype is that Black people, people of color are lazy, disorganized, untimely, and slovenly. When you take someone who has a issue with time and organization and your goal is to overcome a stereotype, it can look like that person is actually feeding into the stereotype, which makes, you know, your parents or your authority figures work even harder to push you in that direction. And if they don't understand ADHD and how it works, They're not going to be able to help you get to where you need to go. So there's a lot of shaming and blaming that comes at those people too. So there's a lot of mindset that you have to consider and unlock and dig down through some of that shame. A lot of it needs to be worked out in therapy. Quick reminder, don't forget you have until November 24th to enter our Spark Joy giveaway. We'll announce our winners during our best of show on December the 1st head over to sparkjoypodcast.com forward slash iTunes for instructions on how to leave a star rating and written review for the show. Then send us an email to contact at sparkjoypodcast.com to let us know you've left a review. Be sure to include your iTunes username for a chance to win one of three coveted Kanmari themed prize bundles that will Definitely spark joy in celebration of our three-year anniversary. In KonMari, there is a specific order to getting a home organized. It's intentionally a little methodical and repetitive, which may be very attractive to people who've had a hard time in the past getting to know how to start or what to do next, but are really motivated to make a change, which sounds like exactly 
where you were at the beginning of your journey. Could you share a little bit about specific types of organizational challenges that would show up with someone who has attention deficit disorder? There are no specifics. It's kind of like asking what a person with ADHD's favorite music would be. Everyone struggles with something different. I would say anything that requires sustained attention would be difficult. Dishes are a popular one for people to keep up with. Those repetitive kind of tasks that just have no end. Like you can dust a room, the room's going to be dusted for a while. But dishes, laundry, sweeping, those kind of things that just don't seem to have an end in sight, the monotony of that can be difficult for us. So you mentioned that you were able to overcome those difficulties. What were some of the strategies that you put in place to be able to get a little bit more focused over those common adulting tasks that you just mentioned? One of the things that I do is make sure that I get my dishes well rinsed before they go into the sink because I might not have the time to circle back to them immediately and do them. You know, you don't want to attract any kind of vermin or have any kind of odor going on. So that's, you know, a quick fix for me. I call it a minimum level of clean, like company clean and daily clean are two different things. My goal is to make sure that my home is sanitary and that it's safe. So anything beyond that, it's not bothering me. And you mentioned that scenario with that stuffed locker with miscellaneous things, uh, paper, all commingled. Uh, Do you have any strategies for those who are attention deficit and have, you know, trouble when they see, you know, a pile and they immediately feel overwhelmed or Maybe they attempt to organize and they lose focus. Is there something that pulls you back? Actually, piles are the preferred method of organization for a lot of people with ADHD. They don't necessarily fear the pile. They actually tend to use the pile. It's more so that you want them to lean into it and say, okay, if I'm going to have a pile of things, it's okay to have a pile of things. Let me put this pile of things in this spot and leave it here so I know that the pile of things is always going to be here. Or I'll put this pile of things into a pretty basket so it doesn't look horrible and I still have everything that I need. You want to work with your brain instead of against it. Gotcha. I've heard a lot of clients tell me that if they can't see something, it just doesn't exist. So I think that that makes a lot of sense for people who are visual in that way and they really just need to see things in order to feel that they have control over their day. But speaking of piles and considering the kind of work that you do and and the kind of work that a lot of us do that's very content focused, how do you manage your to-do list or your task or, or manage, you know, things like, emails and paper that you have to utilize as part of your day-to-day work? Email is a challenge for all of us. And email is a challenge I can't say that I've mastered yet. One of the things that I do now is star things that I absolutely have to get to. I block off time in my schedule specifically to answer email because if I don't, I won't make the time. That thing that people have that says, let me go circle back to my email I don't have that. If I don't have a time set with myself to go check email, it's not going to happen. I'm not going to remember. And that's, you know, I tell people don't fib. If you set a timer for something and you're not going to do it right, then reset the timer because you're not going to remember it. That's why you had to set it in the first place. Do you keep a to-do list? How do you manage the tasks that you need to get done every day? I don't keep a to-do list. I actually, I really don't like to-do lists very much. With time blocking, I'm able to kind of get in there and keep the tasks managed. A lot of the things that I do are very repetitive. And a lot of the other, like with content production, I know the steps that I need to go through in order to complete a piece of content. So it's more about what do I want to focus on versus a specific to-do list. To-do lists actually kind of really, 
they bring me down. I prefer not to work with them, but I know they work for other people. And that's, you know, that's another thing about ADHD. What appeals to one won't appeal to another. There's no hard and fast way to get it done. It's all about what you find interesting. If it motivates you, if it tickles your brain, that's what you want to go for because that's what's going to help you sustain your attention over time. It sounds like there's a lot of trial and error and trying different things to see if they work for you. And then if it doesn't, not using that as something to shame yourself with, but moving on to something else that might work. Very much so. It's like being a test monkey for a little while. And things that work don't stay working all the time. So you have to be willing to be married to the idea of completing something, not the method that you use to complete it. People think that they're going to come into contact with a special method and that's going to be the one that causes everything to fall into place. And it's just not like that. You know, there are many different ways to get things done. Like for instance, my dog was diagnosed with diabetes recently and I thought, okay, well, we can take our medicine at the same time. And that'll help me stay on task, you know, with my own medicine, because, you know, again, ADHD, it's not far fetched to forget to take your medicine. So I thought this will be a great reminder. Well, it was until we started having to add more steps in and then it became a whole to do list. So then I had to separate us again. So now I do everything for myself an hour before and everything for him an hour after. So it's about being flexible. What works for a while doesn't always work. I'm really interested in knowing what is next for you. What is coming up for you and Black Girls Lost Keys in the rest of the year and the year to come? One of the things that I'm going to be writing about before the end of the year, I'm putting out a book called From Hell to Holidays because you know all the work that goes into organizing holiday celebrations. There's scheduling, there's lists, there's items that need to be purchased, there's presents that need to be purchased. There's decorating that needs to happen. All of those things require executive function. I'm in the middle of writing a how-to guide to kind of simplify it and break it down in a way that it will be easier for people with ADHD. Well, not just put you on the spot, but we'd love it if you could share one of your favorite tidying or organizational tips that relate back to that book you're preparing. Oh, gosh. Yeah, that is putting me on the spot. (laughs) (laughs) Since we are approaching the holidays. And it's practical for me because I live alone. I don't let any Christmas presents come in my house until I'm ready to wrap. They all stay in my trunk. Nice. Wow, that's great. Yeah, like they can't come in here. If they come in here, I grew up in a house. My mother, ironically, was diagnosed with ADHD about a year and a half ago. It's not beyond anybody between my mother and I to go, yeah, I just found your Christmas present and it'll be like May or June. (laughs) So funny. Very relatable as well. That's a great (laughs) tip. Thank you. Yeah, a lot of it, a lot of these things are about prevention. It's about knowing if I bring this in here, it's going to get lost. So it can't come here because it's going to get lost. Well, Renee, you've shared so many great practical tips, and we'd love to hear a little bit more about what's sparking the most joy for you these days. Right now, like, I think the thing that sparks my joy a lot right now is just interacting with people on Twitter. There's so much good information out there, and there's so much interaction and love to be spread when you've got people who are struggling who kind of come together in a little community and that's what we've managed to do over there where we all talk about different things we're challenged with we share tips we share disappointments we share victories they've heard more about diabetic dogs than I'm sure anybody cares to hear (laughs) so you know it's all about supporting and being supported so that's what sparks joy for me Well, Renee, that is so great. And we would love for you to tell us how our listeners can get in touch with you. You can find me a couple different ways on Twitter. They wouldn't let me get my whole screen name in there. So I'm actually a little bit abbreviated over there. It's at 
BLK Girl Lost Keys. The blog is blackgirllostkeys.com. Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, all those other places, you can find me at Black Girl Lost Keys. I'm very easy to find. If you type me into a search engine, all of the stuff will come up. And I also, I wrote a book called Everything You Need to Completely Clean with ADHD. It'll give you all of my organizational tips and tell you how to discover your own methods of cleaning and what's best for you. You can find that at my storefront through the website, or you can go to the store directly. It's blackgirllostees.com, T-E-E-S. We'll definitely link to all of your social media in our show notes. Thank you so much, Renee. It was really great to speak to you today. Thank you. It was lovely, lovely, lovely being here with you. I really appreciate the invite. I look forward to listening to some more episodes myself. So now we want to hear from you. Tell us your burning, tidying questions or share stories about how Kanmari has impacted your life. Head over to Apple Podcasts to subscribe and review the show, which helps us reach others along their tidying journeys. To extend your tidying experience, you can join the SparkJoy Club. Visit sparkjoypodcast.com and click join the club to become a member of the SparkJoy community or join us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thanks for tuning in, and we hope your day sparks joy. Thank you for listening to Spark Joy with your host, Kristen Ivey of For the Love of Tidy in Chicago and Karen Sochi of The Serene Home in New York City. Spark Joy, the podcast, is not endorsed by or affiliated with Kamari Media Inc. The opinions expressed on this episode represent the views of the co-hosts and guests alone and do not represent the corporate position of Kamari Media Inc. or the Kamari Consultant Community.